Uh, uh, dig? Ooh, okay. Do not attack Gyarados. Pokemon Vintage White. Some of you may know it, some of you might not. Vintage White is a Pokemon White ROM hack made in the same style as a Adriano hacks. The creator, not Suiku, takes the base game and makes everything much more difficult. All the trainers have harder and updated new teams, but then you also have a larger variety of Pokemon at your disposal. A little twist that this game does to make this game more interesting is that it removes all Gen 5 Pokemon and only give you access to Pokemon from Gens 1 to 3. Personally, I did find this a little bit harder than Blaze Black and Blaze Black 2, so if you guys have played Driano Hacks and you guys want more, this would be a perfect game. I started this challenge at the start of summer right after the Blaze Black video, but I had to put it off for a long time because it got so difficult at the end. With that being said, this is my full attempt at a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Vintage White. The game starts by asking you to choose a starter. Because Gen 5 Pokemon aren't available, the starter for these games are going to be the Gen 3 starters. Of course, since hidden abilities are made much more available, the starter that I chose to go for was Mudkip. Now you might be wondering, why do I think this game is so hard? Well, for starters, let's take a look at our first couple rival fights. Bianca starts with a Shuppet who's now a Ghost Dark type and has the ability Prankster. She then sends in her Torchic, which has Speed Boost. Charon uses a Technician Trico as well as an Adaptability Eevee. Keep in mind, these are the first two rival battles. Now thankfully the first gym wasn't too bad, Pogtail can easily wall their grass types, so at least I was able to make it through the first gym without feeling existential crisis, because my goodness does this game get much more difficult. When you get to Nat Green City, you face who I would consider the first run killer of this game. You face N in a double battle where he runs an Arcanine Ninetales combo in the sun. He also has a Chlorophyll Executor in the back that can reset the sun just in case you use any moves to get rid of it. Finally, his last Pokemon is Intimidate Hitmontop, and as we all know, Intimidate is the best ability in the game. I'm almost certain they seek kills into uh, Metatite, so we're gonna switch. We're gonna switch out Metatite. Hopefully, this stops her from doing any damage to us. Okay, that's perfect. Perfect. Oh, he, oh wow, he flash fired himself. Alright, Confuse Ray goes in. Hopefully it stops him from doing anything. We're super bulky. Nice. Yeah. Flame Burst should be fine. Right, that should kill, right? Not exactly. Get the Confusion? Oh, that's so good. So good. Okay, perfect. And then wing attack. Nice. This is Pog Swellow, guys. Yeah, forget switching. Alright, moving on. Lenora is very difficult. It's not like Blaze Black and Volt White, where she has Stab Retaliate on all her team members. Rather, it's a bunch of factors that come in that make it really, really difficult. Self Destruct Licky Tongue. A slacking at level 28, granted it is slow start, and a ghost type Kecleon. Yeah, that's right, a ghost type. Bulky explosion Licky Tongue set. We are gonna just put it to sleep. Uh, and now we set up Hardens. Okay, that's one. That's two. That's three. That's three. That's four. Because crit has higher chance. God, this does nothing. Never mind. We need to be <laughs> overwinding. Ooh, Omni Boost. I'll take that. Ooh, critical. That's good. We have Omni Boost, so we should be faster, right? And we're plus one special attack, so this should kill. Yeah. Retaliate's gonna do double damage, right? Plus, we are plus five defense. It's not gonna do that much damage, right? So I'm just going to go for the Silver Wind. It's probably not going to kill, but... Yawn is fine. Okay, Retaliate. Normal Gem, not going to do anything. Brick Break, that's going to hurt a little bit more. Yeah. Bro, everything on her team has Brick Break for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, Pog Swallow takes the Brick Break. 
should be fine. Uh, that's a little bit more than I thought. Yeah. Setting up is too risky because of it is way too much damage on me. Okay, so he dies next turn. Takes my leftovers. Mm. Okay, this is correct. We go here for the cover. Why would you brick break? I guess it was also a kill. Let's supersonic. He's still asleep right now, so let's supersonic. How much damage is this? That's a good bit. That's a good bit. Because we're faster. Oh, Shadow Sneak? Ha! Hate yourself. I should have seen that, though. I should have went for the Aqua, Aqua Jet. Honestly, Seeking? Not bad. It is, like, really buffed in this game, but it's honestly not bad. That's good damage. That's good damage. Okay, nice. That's two turns. Nice. Okay. Oh, he went for the switcheroo. He went for the switcheroo. Okay, is this it? Is that it? Nice. Easy. Deathless Lenora. Look at that. Finally. That fight made me feel pretty confident. The next gym leader is a bug type double battle, so I wasn't really that concerned. I made sure to go through the forest and get some desert encounters, as well as the fossil as my Knack Green City encounter. So before you know it, I prepped up a solid team and I was in the third gym. Berg is a bug gym leader that we fight in a double battle, something pretty standard that we've all seen before. But you might have also noticed that a lot of Pokemon have been made much more viable. Pokemon that you would usually brush off have gotten ability boosts, type changes, and even complete base stat redistribution. Some good examples are Chimeco being Psychic Steel, Lunatone being Ghost Rock, and probably the weirdest of all, Skarmory is now a special attacker. It's kind of weird. Okay, so Wolby Illumise. This Wolby has Prankster Rain Dance. So we have Meganium out here to bait attacks into him. We're gonna switch him into uh, Ninetales to bring in our Drought, and we're gonna Rock Slide. Okay, there's the Drought. Shit, all right, didn't see the Thunder. That's okay though, that's okay. We're not in that bad of a position, it's just that we won't be able to kill the Scizor. But I, we were supposed to kill them both first turn. Okay, Rock Slide goes in. Since it's single, it should kill now. Are you serious? That's fine. Uh, we can kill it with Quick Attack, unless it uses Prankster, Prankster Heal Order, but that's fine because we can Rock Slide. Oh yeah, we're faster anyway, so even if it is Prankster, we're still faster. That's completely fine. Rock Slide goes in, should kill. Dust Talks, and is it Scizor or Heracross? Scizor, right. Nobody can really do anything to Relicant, and it's not gonna Bullet Punch a Ninetales. This is fine. Protect is fine from you. And now whatever the Scizor does, it's- yeah, perfect, perfect. And now we're faster, so we can do this, and this. Because we're Swift Swim, we go first. Nice. Crit on the Scizor. Oh, double crit, wow. So we should be able to kill the Scizor. Right? Uh, we're close. Okay. Then it probably sees like a bug bite. Ooh, nice flinch. Nice flinch. Okay. Heracross. So Heracross is skill link. It probably sees Bullet Seed into uh, Relicant as a kill. We're faster than the Scizor, unless it uses Bullet Punch. But we can Rock Slide to kill. I don't think the Heracross is going to go for Armaldo, because any attack does less than half. Okay, Bullet Seed, that's completely fine. Completely predicted. This should do nothing. This should do like, total 25%. Yeah, look at that. Easy. And now we're faster than Scizor, so we can kill it. Nice. And now we have Air Cutter to kill the Heracross. Easy! Look at that. Flying colors. I'm disappointed in Bird. After the gym fight, Bianca challenges us to a battle, but we show her that she's still got room to improve. And I only say this because as we exit the door, Charon challenges us to a battle right after, and he does not hold back. 
That Trico we saw earlier is now a Technician Sceptile that's also a Dragon type. Surprisingly enough, there's actually not a lot we could do about it. This game is very balanced in that even though all the Pokémon you use have been very buffed, there's an equal amount of random changes in this game that might catch you off guard, and that makes this game really interesting. We have Lightning Rod, so he's never going to use a Thunder move, and we also have Rindo Berry on Sea King to not have it use a Grass move. So we Aqua Tail the Houndoom, and we Earth Power the Jolteon. I guess it will go with a Grass move. Going to you? Okay. So he's throwing. Minus one Aqua Tail should still kill because we have raised attack in this game and level advantage. And Earth Power obviously kills. Nice. Once I, I might have messed up. Because now that I have Rindo Berry on Sea King, the Sceptile sees a Leaf Blade as highest damaging move into Camerop rather than Leaf Blade. Snorlax definitely wants to Earthquake us, so we switch into Medicham on the left. We could also protect one side. Protect left side, bring in Swellow, kill, bring- No, but then we're risking a- but then we're risking Swellow. But I could switch that out into Relicanth, and an Earthquake into Medicham was what we kind of expected already. Although we're risking the same thing though. No, but then we have an extra chance of- okay. Yeah, let's do it like this. So, we put- oh, we do- you don't even have Protect. Never mind, we have to do it like this then. <laughs> uh, so we switch into Medicham on the left side, and we switch into Swellow on the right side. And then, Sceptile should see Leaf Blade into the camera up side, rather than Seeking, because we have the berry. Please? Please? Why? Why would you go into that side? Ah. Okay, this always kills. And Rock Slide kills. Man, losing Medicham was dumb. The AI, the AI definitely sees the berry because it energy balled into camera. And just like that, I got my first death of the run. I'm pretty proud of myself to say that I only lost a Pokemon at this point in the game, but that's exactly when I started losing half my box. I was making my way through the desert area when this one trainer had this really, really awkward team for me to go up against. Glaceon went down no problem, but I completely missed the fact that Lapras is a dragon water type. This means that I have no super effective move against it, and his moveset has crazy coverage. I had the docks right next to me when I entered the battle, so I probably should have done more research. But researching in this game is incredibly tedious, when every single Pokemon has a type change or a base stat change that you have to keep track of. In the end, I did come out victorious, but at the cost of 3 deaths. Plus, I also did just lose Relicanth before this when I was trying to catch the Cacturn, so it's really 4 deaths. And of course, another end fight right before you want to challenge the 4th Gym Leader. Uh, this one's pretty awkward because he runs a Sand Team, and it's a double battle. But everything should be mostly straightforward. They can't do anything to Chimeco. We're going to U-turn into Tyranitar, and it should deal about half damage. And then we flash cannon into Tyranitar, killing the Tyranitar before it can do anything. Sandslash might, uh... Sandslash, Sandslash wants to use an Iron Head into, uh, Swellow. So if we switch into Ninetales, that it basically can't do anything to us. So now we get rid of the Sand, removing its Sand Force boost. Okay, Cross Poison, that's fine. We have Lumberry. And then we also equipped, uh... Swellow with a Charty Berry to reduce rock damage so that the Tyranitar sees an Ice Beam kill rather than a, a Power Gem kill. But he should die right here. Okay, and then this should bring in Skarmory. The Intimidate on the Sand Slash is really good because minus one is really important. Skarmory doesn't matter because Skarmory is a special attacker in this game, which is really weird. Yeah, so he digs, giving us the free turn to use a Flame Burst on the Skarmory, killing it. Perfect. And then this brings in Cacturn. Sucker Punch, that's fine. Dig, protected, that's good. Okay, Weezing come in, comes in, and it has Levitate to take the, uh, uh, Dig. Ooh, okay. 
Do not attack Gyarados. Thank God for that minus one. Okay. <laughs> they both attack Gyarados. Perfect. I was certain they were going to dig onto the Ninetales. Ooh. Okay, not that bad. Okay, we have a pretty good setup for Elisa. This is a double battle in Rain Team. So it's kind of like the end battle, but more awkward. Camera up on the left side to protect. This is just to draw in a uh, Scald, and then we're going to Bulldoze. This will lower their speed, and this will uh, make us faster so that we can kill next turn. Okay, Scald, good. Nice. Okay, perfect. This lowers their speed, and we should be faster next turn. If it uses Rain Dance, that just makes us faster, so that's completely fine. Alright, perfect. So now we're faster, and then we can kill. And they don't even get off the uh, Scald. Which means that we don't get off the plus one special attack, but that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. We weren't going to outspeed anything anyway, so... Okay, Electrode Magnezone. Faster than Magnezone, so we can escape the uh, Energy Ball. Okay, there's Drought. Oh wait, that makes us slower now. Right, okay. Oh no, we're just faster than anyway. Never mind. Okay. Uh, he has Aquaberry, but Flame Burst damage should break the Focus Sash on Electrode. That should be fine. Okay. And now because of Rain is gone, it means we're slower than Magnezone. And then he actually misses his uh, Energy Ball. Okay, so he definitely wants to Energy Ball us now. And Pidgeot actually sees kills in both of us. So let's switch into Camera because he can take anything. And then to take the Energy Ball, we switch into Chimeco. And yeah, Energy Ball goes into the right side. That's expected. Special Defense Drop. None of them can really do anything to Camera Opt. I think we Lava Plume here and we Protect. Thunder. Okay, we protected. Can't do anything to us. Rain Dance. And this kill? Not really. Okay, so we take the Thunder. Energy Ball? Okay, yeah, because it's, it's not going to Energy Ball Chimeco. And then this should kill. Okay, yeah, and there goes the Magnezone. That's fine. Uh, I think we're going to have to switch out Swampert due to the Intimidate, because now it doesn't do anything. Alright. It's probably like Aura Sphere. Yeah. Going to Camera Opt. Perfect. Okay. And yeah, we can take a Hurricane. And then I think Manectric should die from the Earth Power. That's a crit. Ooh. Okay, perfect. Perfect, easy! Woo! Got a little close there with Chimeco, but I didn't even realize a crit was almost in range to kill me there. If it was high roll crit, then we would have died for sure. This is a Sandstorm team. Earthquake is a kill right now. It won't use Thunder Punch because that's not a kill. It's not gonna Rock Slide. It's only gonna Earthquake. So we can bring in Pelipper and use Drizzle to get rid of the Sandstorm. This will remove all their special defense boosts, and we can sweep from here. So we can swap into Electrode. And Electrode has Lightning Rod to boost its special attack. Okay. There is nothing new about Doug Trio, so this should be a kill. Perfect. Alright, so now this is where it gets kind of choppy. We Volt Switch out of here to break the Sash, and we switch into Pelipper to take the Earthquake.
Um, and now we do not U-turn here. We do not U-turn here because that won't bait Thunder Punch from Regirock, so we have to kill it with Scald. Perfect. Now it sends out Regirock. We have Charty Berry on us, so that it does not go for the Rock Wrecker, okay? And we switch into Electro to take the... Why? We have the Charty Berry. That's so dumb. Alright, we're in backup mode. God, that was so stupid. It was a crit too. Yeah. I don't understand why he would rock wrecker me. Thunder Punch is a kill. Because I'm pretty sure we could still flash cannon kill everything on that team. We only needed the plus one for the Tyranitar and Tyranitar. That's such a dumb crit. I want to retry that fight. There's no way he goes. I'm obviously going to like put away Electrode. Okay, so the plan is set out the rain and then sweep with Swampert as much as we can. And then we have other Pokemon to switch into in just in case we mess up. Right. Aqua Tail in, in the rain. That should definitely kill. Right. Yeah, Snorlax is super bulky, so we can take a bunch of crits. Uh, we have Lumberry for a Paralysis, so... Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's Steel-type in this game, so I should leave him with 1 HP. Uh, Hurricane Confusion is probably the worst thing to happen. So don't confuse me. Okay. Okay, no confusion. Perfect. And then we kill with Aqua Jet. Kingler. This is a steel type in this game, so I'm pretty sure it just dies to an earthquake. Yeah, okay. Because I'm pretty sure it has recover, so you want to get it into range where it won't recover. Trick first turn is fine. Uh, let's switch into Armaldo here, because poison damage is kind of a lot. Perfect. Okay, Metagross, I think that's it. Alright, perfect! Perfectly planned end fight. That's a first, considering that all the other battles have gone wrong for some reason. Alright, so Skyla is- Yeah, so my mic wasn't plugged in properly. Skyla in this game is a triple battle, much like the Drayana Skylas. Triple battles tend to be very fast and chaotic, especially when your opponent can reach the entire field with her flying types. She leads with Skarmory, Gyarados, and Tropius. Arguably not the best flying types in the game, but they've all been super buffed, so it is a pretty rough start. On my side, I'm leading two Electric types and Pelipper for the rain. I start by thundering the Gyarados so that I don't have to deal with him later on in the battle. His Walking Berry does reduce the damage, but it is enough to take him out. I also Thunderbolt the Skarmory to get it out of here. It's one of those awkward bulky Pokemon that I just don't want to deal with. Finally, Pelipper sets up a Tailwind, boosting our speed. The turn ends with Tropius hitting a stab Dragon Pulse into Pelipper, dealing about half health. With two spots open, she sends in her next two Pokemon, Gliscor and Aerodactyl, two of the heavy hitters on the team. With Earthquakes incoming, I make sure to protect the left side and swap out the center with Gyarados. Not only does this make us immune to Earthquake, it also puts them at minus one attack. Also, to kill the Tropius, I U-turn my Pelipper out of there and swap in Swellow. Earthquakes from both the center and the left side miss, as Tropius hits Swellow for a Dragon Pulse. It does a bit more than half health as Gliscor's Toxic Orb poisons him. Swellow uses Fly to take out the Tropius next turn, and I decide that Aerodactyl and Gliscor have to go now. A Never Miss Thunder from Electivire takes out the Aerodactyl, and a Rain Boosted Aqua Tail by Gyarados takes out the Gliscor. This just leaves the Tropius that's gonna die next turn, and the Swellow that she sends in. 
Swellow comes down on the Tropius, bringing it down to yellow health, as Thunder from Electivire one-shots her Swellow. Finally, Gyarados finishes the job by Ice Fanging the Tropius. This gets us a 6 batch in a pretty wild and dynamic fight. You can see how triple battles get really hard to keep track of when there's so much going on in each turn. But that's exactly what makes triple battles exciting. Okay, so the plan for Bryson is quite simple. All of his Pokemon are mostly slower than us, so we should be able to take him out. Um, Glaceon's faster, so she'll get the Snow Warning up first, and then we get our Drizzle. Head smash the Glaceon, and we take no recoil, and we U-turn out of here. Regice most likely wants to Zap Cannon us, most probably into Pelipper because that's where we see the kill. So we switch into Swampert. Okay, yeah, there's a Zap Cannon. I actually don't think this Regice can do anything. Let's go Head Smash into Regice, uh, Aqua Tail into Jinx. Solid. And Jinx has like no defense, so this should be a kill. Okay. Why is the cry so long? Okay, this is Wall Rain and who? Is it Frostlass or Lapras? Lapras. Because we are Pasho Berry, so it doesn't want to go Hydro Pump into my Aerodactyl. Protect is fine. And head smash. Does this kill? We're, we're we are rock head, so we don't take recoil. Good. Frost last. Um, we can kill the frost last now, and it's probably not gonna blizzard. I don't think it's gonna go hydro pump into arrow. Like we should be fine. Okay. Why'd that go down so slow? Okay, so this this thing is Water Dragon, which means it's only weak to Dragon types, and it has that berry. Okay, Hydro. Ooh, shit. So we have the berry, but is it enough to reduce the damage? Stop, 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 stop! Dragon Pulse? It doesn't have berry. We're faster, and we should kill, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Ooh. Okay, that could have gone wrong. I don't know what we would have done if we lost Arrow. I guess since it was last Pokemon, it doesn't really matter what we do, because we have Kingdra, but... Anyway. Coming out of Bryson's Gym, we next have to fight probably one of the hardest run killers in this game. Bianca's team has significantly improved since the last time we clowned her, so this fight took me about two days to plan. Our levels are pretty close as well, so we don't actually have that much level advantage. Also, fair warning, the audio gets kinda messed up here. I guess we can kill we can kill these two on the first turn. Nice. Okay, so that's a kill. I'm expecting Blaziken Magnazo next. Maybe Creedilly. Okay, Magnazone. Salamence. I think it's gonna go for Flash Cannon just because uh, we resist Energy Ball. Okay, so Drizzle. So this means we're faster and our water moves have boosted damage. Oh, Zap Cannon? Wait. I, but that's inaccurate, isn't it? I think they both go into Kingdra, right? So let's protect. And we can Ice Beam the Salamence. Or oh, no, we Scald the Magnazone. Because I, because I don't have anything in the back for the Magnazone. Uh, do we kill the Magnazone at this health? We should, right? We have Water Gem. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, that's a crit too? <laughs> okay. That's kind of a lot. 
Okay, this is resisted. Um, God damn. Critical hit. Okay, that's why. Oh, this is life orb too. Okay, so I, I need to find a way to kill this uh, Salamence. So they, I think they both see kills into Gliscor. A U-turn out into something that can take a Dragon Claw. So I switch out into Kingdra. Right, and then because I think we're the fastest on the on the field right now, so we can U-turn first. Okay, and we go into something that takes like a Dragon Claw. Oh, nice crit. Yeah. Fly is okay. We can flash cannon and kill the Cradilly, right? And let's protect. Because we're faster with Kingdra. Which means next turn we can Dragon Pulse the Salamence to kill. Okay. Nice. Definitely not played the best. <laughs> Oh, I could have died to a crit so many times. Nice. God damn, is that hard. Yeah, Electrode kind of destroys this, this one. Okay, so the plan for Iris is to bait attacks with Pelipper in the center, and then destroy her with their left and right sides. Okay. God, there's so many like entry hazards. Holy. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so we Dragon Dance because ni neither Metagross nor Flygon can do anything to us. Protect, and we kill the Salamence. Solid. Okay, Draco Meteor into Pelipper. That's fine. We protected. And we Dragon Dance. Easy. We probably do this then. We Ice Fang to kill the Flygon. We switch into you. And then we Dragon Pulse the Dragonite. I, ha I have uh, specs on Kingdra, so I can't use Protect here. This should kill, right? We have... Oh, really? Wow, okay. I think the Dragonite actually sees an Outrage into Pelipper as more damage. Or actually, I don't know. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Uh, this is not gonna kill. Close. I guess we are in the rain. Is that Hydro Cannon? Yikes. Okay. Okay. Thank goodness we are both switching out of here. Holy. Nice. Yeah, Dragon Rush is boosted to 90% accuracy in this game. Okay. Easy. And this is dragon type in this game too. Nice. With all eight badges collected, we're now in the end game. There's a final rival battle with Charon at the end, right before Victory Road, but he's not that difficult. This means that all that stands between us is the Elite Four, N, and Getsis. The Elite Four for this game are all single battles, which makes it a lot easier to plan for. However, it was around this point in the game that I realized that the updated version of this game actually removes all weather. 
If you haven't noticed already, weather plays a pretty major role in most of my plans, so for this Elite Four, I decided to ban weather conditions. Going into the team, we have Poison Heal, Glyscore, we have Wob Effect, Intimidate Salamence, of course, Rockhead Aerodactyl, Magneton, and Gengar. This is going to be our team going in, and this is going to be the team that gets us the victory. Alright, so, of course, we always do Chantel first. If you don't do Chantel first, you're a monster. Okay. So, I haven't done any calculations, but I know what the teams are. So this Sableye is a knockoff Will-O-Wisp Sableye. So of course we're going to leave someone who's already poisoned, right? Uh, it can't do that much to us because we're Poison Heal Protect. So let's set up a Swords Dance. See how much damage it can do to us. So how much is this? That's about, what, 60, 70 damage? And then how much do we heal per turn? Like 30? Okay, so two protect turns, basically back up to full. Okay, let's set up to plus six, because we definitely want to take this thing out. This thing has, like, one speed. Literally one speed. Solid. Um, Prankster Will-O-Wisp, I assume? So then it can't do anything to us because we're poisoned. Damn, okay, that's a little bit scary. Oh my goodness. Um it goes through protect anyway, so solid. Uh I don't think anybody here has uh focus sash, so yeah, of course, because like it, 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 there's no way it's fa faster than us. And like the only Pokemon that is faster than us is probably the Gengar, right? Maybe the Zangoose? Lunatone. We can take care of that. I probably should have protected there, but we, we get enough per turn that it doesn't really matter. Um, also, I have been informed that I, was pl that, that I was playing an outdated version of this game. So the updated version actually has no weather ability. Okay, chill, 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 chill. Yeah, it is Life Orb, jeez. Okay, um, last is the... Last is a Zangoose. Um... Oh, you're serious? Great. No, okay, so then it's gonna- it's attacking us first turn. Um, let's switch into something that takes... Oh yeah, I forgot that, um... I forgot that we're plus six. Okay. That works too, that works too. One word, if I could use one word to describe Grimsley team, it would be gnarly. His team is really gnarly. We vile. We are going to just kill this. Use that. Ooh, not in range to die. Hi, Ranitar. Ooh, this is Dragon Dance, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I just saw the Dragon Dance. But that's a pretty good amount of damage. I like that. Good. Nice. Three out of the next four Pokemon are going to be a big threat to me. I say we Volt Switch out. Nice. Okay, probably the worst option. Let's head smash here. Yeah, I don't want to give Grumpig a leftovers.
and then we'll just U-turn on the next one. Nice. Yeah, there's the nasty plot. Obviously. This thing is frail like paper. Solid. Okay, and this last Pokemon is... <laughs> it's it's so weird. It's so weird. It's a mixed Crobat with Sniper and Scope Lens. If you guys are wondering why I'm not taking Recoil, it's because I'm it's because I'm Rockhead. But uh, yeah, I think that's uh, Elite Four number two down. Elite Four number two down. Okay, like I said, Grimsley's got a pretty gnarly team. Surprisingly, Caitlyn's a physical team, mostly, and not a special team. Like she has an Alakazam, but the rest of her team is physical. Drowsy, by the way, is boosted. That's why it's a. That's why she has a Drowsy and not a Hypno. It's like really buffed in this game. We're gonna go for Head Smash, probably kill. Uh, I think the only Pokemon we don't outspeed is the Alakazam. Whoa! Yeah, that's really buffed Drowsy then. In fact, we're not even gonna kill it, are we? Um, okay, if it wants to miss ball, we U-turn and... Who do we go to? Who takes a Psychic move? So we can never Dark Void us because we're poisoned. Uh, let's Sword Stance and let's see how much a Mist Ball does, right? Because apparently that's a lot of damage. Okay, how much is this? It's only 5 PP. We can, we can maybe PP stall it. Hmm. Ooh, hold on. This ball crit might kill me then. Okay. Yikes. Yeah, let's be careful. Let's be careful. Okay. We almost just... <laughs> we almost did something dumb there. What? We don't kill? Oh my gosh. This is a crazy busted drowsy then. Oh, this is Evia Light. That's why. I j Oh my god, it's so scary. It's out, it's out. Solid. Um, so what outspeeds me? Alakazam. Uh, not the Giraffe Rig, not the Gallade, and not the Jinx. I'm plus B nature though, right? I think we can kill this then. We can kill this then. I'm plus B nature. Yeah, because like I think we both have the same base speed, but plus B nature just makes me faster. Solid. Maybe not. Oh, sweet. Okay. Psychic, we swap into Magneton. Aura Sphere, we swap into Aerodactyl, because you're faster. And then you turn out. And then we switch into, into Gengar and go for the Shadow Ball kill. I feel like that's... <laughs> it's a complicated play. Swap here for the Psychic. Because we resist and we're e my god here for the aura sphere, right? Oh god, we go here for the outspeed, break the sash. Um, I think it's okay for Magneton to die because it's not going to do anything for Marshall, which is actually just a sandstorm team. Okay. Goodbye. You did well. You did well. In that case, we just go here because we're faster. I actually don't know if Gengar outspeeds. Brave Bird. God, that was such a shame. Such a shame. Okay. 
thank God I said that we don't need Magneton because I don't feel as bad now. All right, so as you can see, it's permanent Sandstorm in his gym. And he has a really weird team. All of his Pokemon are like ground, rock, steel, whatever. But then they're also like secondary weather types. So like he has like Swift Swim on the Swampert. He has like Sandstream on Steelix. And he has like, he has a Pokemon that, that can set up like Sun. It's really weird. Super, super weird. We're going to set up Hypnosis. Hit. Nice. Perfect. We're going to set up Hypnosis and then we're going to kill this. Crit. Okay, we kill next. Oh, what? Are you serious? One turn sleep? God damn. Nice. Kingler. Not even a crit. That's not even a crit. Damn, Marshall's really freaking tough then. We probably needed that, that crit too. We probably needed that crit. Uh, Alright, uh, Steelix. Uh, ooh, Stone Edge maybe? That's not good. Oh, we're all flying types. Okay, so, okay, what I'm gonna say is not gonna make too much sense. I swap into here, and I set up. Like, it's not that high when you think about it. Okay, yeah, and it's gonna go for these moves. I think Stone Edge only does about, like, half. Shit, not like that, though. Um... Okay, like, we, we can probably s Wow. That's really bad. Alright, that's three Pokémon left. It can't burn us with Flamethrower. It can't flinch us with Iron Head. Uh, it can't hit us with Earth Power. And we established that Rock Slide is not that. Ah, my God, that's a crit, right? Please tell me that's a crit. Not even a crit. And then it's just a Flygon that we can't kill. Okay, solid. Free Dilly. Okay, we win. At the cost of three Pokemon. Maybe could have done better. Maybe I could have done better. But you know what? I'll just take this. As we reach the final two battles, you might have noticed that everyone in the Elite Four have all level 100 Pokemon. This means that the only factor between winning and losing is your skill. Okay, so we're now finally in the end game. Let's do this. Um, so unfortunately, we couldn't use any of our toxic Pokemon, so we can't use Zangoose. We can't use we can't use Gar uh, Gliscor, and we also can't use Swellow here because N heals us before the battle, which sucks. U-turn, take a Leaf something into uh, Salamence, and then we fly from there. It's Dragonite. So, okay, it wants a Draco Meteor me. It's either, actually, no, it's, ooh, interesting. Oh, fuck, he has that. How much damage is this? I think I can kill this. Okay. Yikes. It's trying to transform into Salamence. Maybe it's Ditto. Okay, Linoon.
Nice. Okay, okay, okay. We're in this. We got this. We so got this. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, that's actually good. That's actually good. I'm pretty sure this has like 40 health. Good. That's a good amount of damage. That's about like, what, 70? We'll go for the bolt and we'll bolt switch next turn, right? So this is either like jump bluff or Dragonite. Jump bluff. This is prankster sleep powder. And then it also has like substitute. That's not bad. That's not bad. Because we have sun up right now. So thank you to the uh Magmar. This should kill. This should kill. Nice. Yeah, I didn't. I don't really know that Electivire can learn. Uh, can learn that either, but apparently they can. Clean, clean. Okay. Nice. This is where it gets tough. Gengar. Focus Sash Gengar. Um, it wants to Thunderbolt us first turn. We're gonna go with... We're gonna U-turn because we're faster. I forgot. <laughs> and then we're gonna go into probably Electivire for the uh, Electric Resist. Because why would I not? Perfect. Gengar's pretty, like, specially bulky. So I think going for Bolt Switch, because uh, like I definitely don't think Thunderbolt can kill, so we definitely go for Bolt Switch here. Ooh, you know what I like? Going into Pinseer, and then setting up Strength with Moxie. I really like that. And we're Choice Scarf, so we're always faster too. Uh, though we can fling that if we have to. Plus, like, if, if Pinseer dies, it's not the worst of it, because like, he was... Okay. Okay. It could be any of the next Pokemon. I don't know. Um, but I'm pretty sure if it's Gyarados or Armaldo, we can kill it with uh, Head Smash. Okay. Solid. Easy. And now I think it's Gyarados. Doug Trio. Alright, what's coming in on this? Probably Metagross. Metagross or Gyarados? One of those two. Yeah, Gatsis' team has a lot of weak to rock type Pokemon. Like, the only thing that's not weak is, like, the Metagross. Okay, nice. We're obviously faster. Head smash kills. Um, and wait till you see his last Pokemon. Solid. So what does this leave? Just a Metagross? Yeah, just a Metagross. Now this could be anything. It could be Meteor Mash, it could be Ice Punch. I think it's Meteor Mash, right? Because Ice Punch and Meteor Mash are both super effective, but Meteor Mash is Stab. Ooh, yeah. This is what? 190 base power? It's definitely stronger than uh, just a Thunderbolt. Okay, lucky burn. Lucky burn. Fuck. I wanted to Volt Switch out. <laughs> yeah, Rayquaza. Here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to protect to see what the hell it's going to do. And then I'll decide. Okay, Draco Meteor. Why don't we Volt Switch into, uh... Ooh. Oh, I know. Draco, how much is this? 
stop, 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 stop. Just stop, just stop, stop. We're doing it. Destiny Bond Strats. Destiny Bond Strats. <laughs> With that, I think that's the end of this this challenge, you know? Uh if you guys can tell, this was a uh, getting rid of weather, I think weather I think was a good decision. Obviously, I used it for like the most of the run, but like for this uh, this end game, right? Not having to use weather was pretty uh, was a pretty big deal because like weather is so OP. Not including Gen Five Pokemon though. That that did, that didn't make any sense to me. Like this game only includes Gens One to Three, which doesn't make any sense to me. Like I have to say, it's not as difficult as Blaze Black, but it's significantly more difficult than Bla Blaze Black Two. So if you're jumping from Blaze Black Two to Blaze Black. I think I think this is a good game, like in between to. Um, but other than that, yeah, great game overall. Who knows what my next challenge is going to be?